to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast, episode 29. That would be a Makaban showing you his uh, crazy fur. <laughs> I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai, and this is 29 Beach Baby. So it is Sunday, August 5th, 4th, 7th? Uh, no, I think it's the 5th. Um, I just got back, showered, cleaned, we're both cleaned. Roland and I went to the beach this morning, so that was a grand adventure. Hopefully I have a little clip for you guys of him running away in the sand. Oh my god, he was so funny. The, uh... Dad, 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 Dad. Maybe don't eat rocks. Wonderful. Rollin! No! Oh! <laughs> no! Let's not eat rocks. The beach that we went to is out in Kittery, Maine. Um, I put in beach and Garmin and let it tell me where to go. I didn't really care. When I left the house this morning, I was just like, okay, it's gonna be a long day with him. He's in sort of a funky mood. 10, no, 11 month old baby. So let's go to the beach for the first time. So the beach we went to, um, it's called Crescent Beach. It, we were the only people there. A guy and his son with their dogs came through, but that was it. Um, and the time we were there, so that was nice, and it was a nice sand beach, which usually around Maine, coastal New Hampshire, you'll find a lot of rock beaches, which is not so much fun for a baby, so we found a good sand beach, and he played, and we went down to the water, and he stood there on the edge, and the wave came up, <laughs> and the first few times it went over his feet, he was good, and then the next few times it was like, no, this is the worst thing ever, so <laughs> I'll have a beach boy on your hands, but he was pretty cute this morning. So, all right, let's get into it. First off, let me tell you a little more about what's going on with me while I finish off this row. I am having surgery on Tuesday, so lately I've been having a lot of stomach, abdominal pain, and um, lately, it's been about eight months that this has been on and off and on and off, and if you've had gallstones, you know what I'm talking about. So, um, about two weeks ago, my doctor did the ultrasound finally and said, oh yeah, you've got a lot of stones in there, and I'm 31, like, I'm a pre pretty young woman, I'm not that old, and if we're going to have the expectant knitter riding again, it really doesn't make sense. I don't know how much you can see, but Mac is walking by. <laughs> um, yeah, so doctor said, you know what, it's not doing you any favor, so let's get rid of it. So, <laughs> so on Tuesday, I'm getting my gallbladder removed, so, uh, no, I'm, I've actually been pretty calm about the whole thing. I'm just feeling a little nervous as we get closer and closer, but whatever, I will feel much better, and of course it doesn't help that I've been having all these flare-ups, right, or stones, path, whatever. But, um, right now I'm not having one. <laughs> so, the monitor just kicked on. So it might be an awkward break here if I have to go check on him. But, let's get into the knitting. So, first on the needles. I don't have the first thing I'm on the needles. Well, actually, it's now off the needles. I was working on a pair of, this was my purse knitting, a pair of just straight rib socks. I think it's a 4x4 rib using Joanne Sensation Souls and More in color 1810 on US 1 needles and these are for a hubby. Um, they count towards my goal of getting through or knitting 12 pairs of socks for other people in 2012. This is my second pair and it's August. Do you think I'm going to finish? <laughs> So here you go. They are, yes, you are right, they are massive. So they, these are for Steve. It would help if I put 
This one, it looks wonky because it's on the wrong way. <laughs> They're for Steve. Um, they worked 72 stitches, which is unusual for me, but his, I wanted them, I knit them on size one and I wanted them to be dense for him. Since he's a guy. So there you go. Those are the socks. They are done. Yay! I'm very glad. They're pretty monotonous, knitting with gray. And even though the, um, the yarn did change, right? It's got the ferrule effect in it. It was still kind of boring, so... When you could see, I lined up the pattern really, really well, and then there was a knot in the yarn, and it went off about here. You can see that they no longer line up. And I decided I didn't care. For once in my life, I didn't care if the socks matched, and I kept going. So the part that he will see under his pants will be feet, and those line up pretty close to perfect. So, yeah, pretty close to perfect. So I'm happy with them. I'm glad to have them finished and part of my encouragement for knitting these has been um, the Rockefeller, the Stephen West Middle Mystery Shawl Knit Along for this year has been a challenge for me so to say the least I know I talked about Steve telling me just stop doing it Stephanie you don't like doing these stop but I, I can't bring myself to quit so instead of working on that, the other thing that I've allowed myself to do is work on socks that are not a lot of fun, that I don't really want to work on. And so it's like, well, this or that. The lesser of two evils, if you will. So do you remember I was working on these for Roland? I tried um, this one on him the other day and it fit. I only had one finished and it still fits him. And I was working on these, I think, back in uh, February. Uh, so this still fits him. So I said, well, okay, finish the second one. Get that. That's another, it's another pair of socks for your 12 and 2012 you can get going on. And this is Patent Stretch Sock in color 31242. It's 41% cotton, 39% wool, and then the rest is nylon and um, nylon and elastic and I think the problem is that number one that this is very ugly yarn like I really don't like that color but number two it just feels like a cotton yarn like it's amazing to me 41% that's such a small amount the majority of it is wool nylon which I'm used to working with I'm just not wild about this but I'm pleased to say that I have this much done so I did a cast on I did the foot the heel I'm going up the leg so that was the phone just beeping. <laughs> I would say I've got another um, three or four hours on these and then they'll be done. The cast on on this one is pretty tight. You can see my fingers go out further. So I might rip it off and do rip it out and uh, recast off with the um, modified brush and bind off that I learned at, uh, from Laura at SSK. I really like that bind off. Oh, these are just a two by two rib. It is my own pattern. I was working on writing it up, but I don't know if it's worth it. There's a lot of kids sock out there. And just with a short row heel. Yeah. Toe up. So anyways, those are coming along. I know, I'm sorry. I don't have a lot of excitement about what I'm knitting right now, but today is 80, I think it's like 82 already. And it's not going to get any cooler. <laughs> and I've shut off the AC so that you don't have to hear that. And I'm not a fan of the heat. Surprisingly. I mean, you know what? We were talking, Steve and I, about global warming the other day. And, oh, it's so hot. It's so hot. So I happened to go onto the Weather Channel on the iPad. And it remembers, you know, your favorite city. So, like, my hometown, his hometown. I'm flipping through, I'm flipping through Rye, which is a, a coastal location near us. Flip through all three, they say 75. I flip to where we live, it says 85. It's like, maybe it isn't global warming. Maybe it's just that we live in a place that's just warmer than what we're used to. I don't know. Oh, but since I'm holding it, this is one of my Delicue project bags. I've always liked this one. You can see the string. I should really trim that, but it's a nice. I think it's taffeta. I'm not, I don't know fabrics, but it's kind of shiny. And it's very, very stiff. So that's on the needles. It should be done for you next week. Also on the needles in my Happy Owls bag. So last time I was here, we talked about the Wendy's, Wendy Knits. 
mystery shawl knit along um, for this year that I was working on and I had such a miserable cast on experience not the pattern's fault my own couldn't figure that out I really really like this yarn it is um, what is this color dreaming color Smushy with cashmere whatever the fingering weight one is and I do this every freaking time Smushy with cashmere Smushy with cashmere um, in the global next colorway which is this awesome teal color yeah, you can see what I'm doing. I'm pulling out my stitch markers and I'm sliding it off the needle. So you guys gave me the strength I needed to say, I don't like the finished product. It's not really my style and I'm not enjoying the process of knitting this. So why am I wasting a yarn that I really love doing something I don't really love? So it's coming off the needles right now. I was, I think one or two rows into the second clue out of five and it's just not me the finished pattern like I don't know I'm just it's not a good year for the mystery knits and me this year and what's funny is that last year I did both of them Wendy Knits and uh, Stephen West absolutely love both well you know caveat disclaimer something on the um, on the earth and sky shop because I didn't love it at the time but I love it afterwards and anyway, so I'm putting them back into my little bag. These are mostly my AG Mode stitch markers. I really like her stitch markers. Um, and then there's my wee one, one of the sheep, a stitch marker one of my girlfriends made for me. That's all the yeah. I pretty much only use dangly stitch markers to mark end of rows or on a sweater if it's like a heavyweight sweater pattern so I prefer needle huggers or those little loops that I just showed you so that is now officially off my needles <sighs> breathe a sigh of relief it's done it's over so what else um what else do I have to talk about so again the last no nope, not the last thing on my needles Oh, if this is going to be sticky, I'm not going to be able to rip it out. What is your problem? There we go. You know what? I wonder if the nuts will cause it difficulty. That was the other sort of a dooming feature or something else that caused just difficulty and something I didn't really love about this shawl with the nuts. And I knew I, I didn't think I would like them, but I was trying to challenge myself and just say, you know what? Just do it. Expand your horizons. Um, last week, the prize drawing was for the skein of Fibernet Dye Works Serenity Base, which is a 80-20 merino bamboo in Hot Time Summer in the City, that colorway. Um, the prize drawing was, actually, it's better right here, how's that? was for was the <laughs> I asked you to nominate someone else to win and apparently that's not a real popular thing to do <laughs> I could see though this is a um, pretty unique yarn color and unless you're crazy about it you probably wouldn't appreciate it like unless it's your color sense so it's kind of hard to know that about someone else so I'm going to change the prize drawing I'm not going to draw it this week I'm going to draw it next week if you are interested in this yarn, go nominate something you're working on. So I said, tell me about someone else's whip you love. Tell me about one of your whips that you love. And that'll get you a nomination for this lovely skein of yarn. Because it just, I, I felt bad. <laughs> I was like, nobody wants to nominate anybody. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, go nominate yourself if you're interested. So... There you go. That's a prize drawing for this week. Tell me about a whip that you love. Um, what else do I have to talk about? The next membership drawing that I'm going to do is when we get to 750 members. We are almost there. Last time I looked, it was 713. So it's been a while since I've looked. <laughs> we may actually be over that, but I'm sticking with 713 as where we are. 
Oh, because Mac just can't get enough of the spotlight today. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, what else do I have to tell you about? I am almost done unraveling this thing. Oh, and the cast on was crazy. I cast on from both ends to make sure I had enough yarn to do it. That was an interesting technique. I will definitely use it again when I am knitting a shawl from the long edge or maybe even casting on a sweater. Anything over 200 stitches, I think I'll do that for. So, I can't win today. <laughs> That's okay. You guys are... I'm relaxing and I'm hoping you're knitting while I'm just prattling on. Hey, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. This is a beautiful color of yarn. Uh, <laughs> okay. And now we will put that away. And this away. I'm sitting over here next to uh, Roland's high chair. Okay. Done. Done and done. Okay. Also, on the needles, I have been working on my Hiawassee Creek Farmer's Market socks. So those are the socks that, well, there's some fluff in case I want to make another cupcake for Karen. Um, these are just simple 4x2 rib socks that I cast on and finished the first one while I was at SSK. Um, and then got home and then did all the shawls and just really wasn't wild about it. But there's the first one. You can see it has quite a bit of pooling. It's interesting the way that it um, zigzags. A lot of people thought it was socks that rock. It's very reminiscent of their color sense. So that's the first one. The second one, I'm happy to say I have a little bit of toe on. So that much. Not much. So that's coming along. Those are on um, 1.5. 2.5 millimeter needles, and someone is being a total camera dog today. Totally. Total, total, total. And then lastly on the needle, spoiler alert, if you are working on the Rockefeller and you have not yet through Clue 3, that's as far, well, I started Clue 4, so um, you might not want to see this. There you go. So this is what it looks like so far. I am using uh, the brown color it is Sandara Espresso over Slate. The um, rainbowy color is Into the World Inara, and that's a 80 20, 80 merino, 20 nylon, and then the Sandara is 100% merino. And you can see I've come this far. I have about 100 yards left of this, the uh, Anara and 175 of the Sandara, of the brown, which is not enough to do the next part of the clue. It's, um, or the final section. It's going to have these really long wings that come out off this. So it's like a horseshoe shape with two long wings that come off it. And the wings are just stripes, so I decided to add in a third color into my stripes. So first off, that third color is this purple that you can see at the top. That's Madeline Tosh in the Thicket colorway. You'll remember I get my serrated out of that. I really like the purple. It matches perfectly with the dark purple in here. It was actually one color I was considering using. So I'm doing the um, brown purple Inara colorway to stripe them. I'm also, instead of in decreasing every uh, fourth row, I'm going to decrease every second row. So my wings will be much shorter than the pattern cost for. But this is already a pretty big shawl. Like if I want it, it like granted it needs the wings to keep it, to hold it down, but right now it's already this big. So shorter wings will be fine. So that's how that looks. Yeah, that's my big masterpiece, my Rockefeller. So I'm carrying all three yarns along the edge and it's a little thickly to work with, but it's going, it's going. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk about interweave. 
So I got the Fall 2012 in the mail. And it was a good flip through. I enjoyed it. I'm looking because I'm a bad podcaster and didn't mark the patterns that I like, but I'm getting close. I can see I'm in the cable section. So there were a couple things that really caught my eye in here. A um, couple things that really caught my eye, and then the rest of it I was not at all even remotely interested in. So here's the first one. I don't know if you can see that. The, there are cables coming down from the neck, and they're at an angle, which I'm sure that's about the way the decreases are work. But this is the Hepburn Pullover, and it is using Mono Stel er Erguay Maxima. I think it's knit on some sevens, if I'm remembering right, when I looked at the pattern. So that wouldn't be too slow of a project if I wanted to cast that on. Oh, here I am. Um... Gauge, needles, US 7s, right. Yeah, so that caught my eye, and then, is there anything else? I don't think so, I kind of thought the hats were cute, but, eh, yeah, cable mittens. I mean, none of it really spoke to me. And you know, this was the issue that I got my um, renewal envelope, and I'm not gonna renew, but. I'd rather wait until they get a year's worth and then I can just buy it digitally than keep subscribing to the print. So, because I don't really get much out of this. And to hold on to this for one pattern, that's a lot of space on my bookshelf. And our bookshelves are for ba baby books and professor books for you now. So, that's about it. That's all I have for you this week. I'm sorry, it's a short show and we'll see. I might record next week. I've got um, surgery on Tuesday and then the rest of the week off. So, depending on how I feel. We'll see. So, um, I hope you are enjoying what you're knitting on. I'm thinking color affection might be in my future, or um, I keep going back to the French Girl Knits accessories. There's a headscarf in there that is super cute. So, I might buy that book and cast that on. We'll see. But I'm sure I will have this finished, Rockefeller finished, and be on to something else by the next time we talk. So, until then, enjoy what you're knitting, and I'll see you soon. Take care.